Hey gang, good to see you today. We're going to talk a little bit about something that's been coming up a bit on the internet and also customers asking about for a, a particular style of sword that they are interested in. It's the cocking of the pommel in a historical context of the swords for especially like Viking Age, very early medieval swords, some of the Brazil nut pommels you see it in, even some of the early wheel pommels. And we're just discussing the, the angle that the pommel is set on the sword. So if we can get in real close, you can see that this sword kind of lines up right now. The pommel, the guard, the plane of the blade are all in the same uh, uh, orientation from edge to edge. When you are striking with a sword like this, it can be a little disconcerting with these wide pommels of the Viking Age. They have a tendency to kind of push at the hand a little bit. And when you have it in your grip here, you can see it that it is kind of pushing on the ball of the hand. So this portion of the hand right here, uh, <laughs> use the tip this portion of the hand is being push is pushing that pommel to the inside of the sword and that the thumb and other side of the hand are wrapping around the sword like that and giving a little bit of space here at the base now um, Roland Warzynski has put up a bunch of this stuff Demicator uh, has put up a bunch of information about this it is something you do see in the Nordic swords. They are continually being uh, looked at in more and more detail, and we can document that the majority of them are cocked slightly as if a right-hander was using them because it'll want to spin this part of the pommel slightly this way for that pressure of that part of the hand there. When we look at a sword like this, kind of uh, short Viking sword. You're gonna use it in a very nimble way. You're gonna be doing a lot of manipulation of the grip in the hand to accentuate your combat effectiveness. This is going to have an effect then if that pommel is slightly tweaked to allow you to align your edge more easily with how your wrist and hand are orientated. Uh, now, one of the questions is, now that we've defined what that cock of the pommel is, it's usually two to maybe six, seven degrees kind of thing. Uh, why would they do that? Well, it obviously makes it a little easier, a little more comfortable for the sword in the hand. Uh, we look at it in the context that this was probably done purposefully. There's so many of them that it was probably something that the owner of the sword or the maker of it did. One of the things that I like to make sure that people are aware of in the discussion is that the materials involved also take uh, some of the effect of that piece uh, as far as how easy or difficult it might be to adjust it. Uh, they may well have been done by the maker of the sword. Some of the pommels seem to be designed that way so that the tang passing through the pommel and being peened that tang hole through the pommel is slightly tilted in the right direction to accomplish that. And that may well be the case. But when you look at how these swords were used, a lot of the pressure is gonna be pushing right there where that, that base of the hand is gonna be pushing right against that pommel. And depending on how can, uh, sturdy or uh, heavy your tang is that may have something to do with it here I've reconstructed a section of blade with a hilt uh, guard and pommel on there we can see that it's you know in line if we kind of line this up as there we go right down there so you can see it lines up very straight right now this section here is iron this is not steel. When we make our swords, the whole piece is steel today. We're using steel as our material for the blade. In period, many sec, uh, hilt sections of the sword are iron. Iron is more ductile than steel. Even low carbon steel is softer than hardened steel, 
but is harder than iron. Iron is very ductile. It doesn't work hard in the same way as a steel with carbon in it because the iron should have no carbon in it. That's what makes it iron. Um, there are some things, if it's got some sulfur or things in it, then that can affect that. But when we look at this and we see that it's all lined up, right? And we're looking at this tang, that's a reasonable tang. It looks very similar to the types of tangs that we see in the pictures of originals. And this is all just a hand forged piece of iron. When it takes the amount of energy to twist that pommel is not that great. Iron is relatively soft. So when we go to adjust this, even with my hands now, yeah, I work with swords all day long and am used to what it takes to manipulate a piece. Uh, one key factor, we want to be very aware that when we start talking about this, that it's almost a little bit harder to make sure a sword is perfectly lined up than to have it slightly off. Now, if they're all slightly off the same way, that's showing some intention by the maker and user, and we don't want to you know, say that that didn't happen. But getting a sword to perfectly line up in all the dimensions and everything isn't easy, right? It's something you have to really work at. So if they are all off by two or three degrees to one way or another, that is showing some intention. But that intention may literally just be the fact that when the person gets the sword, they say, well, I like a little more or a little less. So they go to move that sword to create the piece they want, right? So just with my bare hands, I can give it a little bit of movement, as it were. So that when you go to line that up now, you can see it's cocked slightly, right? So that when we are looking down the sword at, at the, from the top, that pommel is no longer straight. It's slightly cocked in the way we want it, probably about three degrees, four degrees maybe. And it's quite a bit more comfortable. When it's in the hand here, you can see that it definitely kind of nestles to the hand a little bit nicer. One of the things we want to look at then is how much deformation occurred, right? We looked at that tang and it was fairly straight. It is still very straight. With the ductility of the iron, most of the distortion is going to happen right here. It's not going to be a twist of the whole piece because the iron is soft enough that even with my hands like that, I was able to manipulate that piece into that cocked position. Now, one theory I have that the only way to really kind of set down is gonna be doing some more experimenting with it is if you're using this sword aggressively, if it's done up and you're using it, <coughs> how much of that happens just because of the pressure of your hand? Now, when you're fighting with a sword like this, you usually don't have a lot of, you know, grabbing it and pushing on it kind of actions. It's much more of fingers and mood manipulation of the sword in hand to accomplish what you're doing. But there might be enough force in the concept of being hit and hitting things that does that naturally, which would be an explanation. Now, it doesn't explain the ones where the pommel is set that way with the pass through. It doesn't mean that this wasn't done by the users on an individual basis going around and saying, I'm gonna adjust this or if it happens to be, maybe they can come back and say, I'm gonna adjust it back and twist it back. You know, that might be possible. So when we're looking at that, there's some things we wanna remember that just manipulating that sword in that way was probably intentional, but we don't know for sure how much and in the context of how it was done, it is probably something that you could do even on a steel sword. So this one's all set up. She's ready to go. We've got a relatively straight piece there, right? When we line that up, give her a little bit of a, oh, I wanna do it the right way. <laughs> Make sure, yeah, let's see here. You could hear it moving. 
a little bit. And there it's cocked. Try and get this to show. But you see that slight cock there? So it's slightly off now, two, three, maybe four degrees, and a little more comfortable. So that when I'm manipulating that sword in and around a fight, it's very effective and it makes it work a little better in the hand. So I just wanted to bring up those kind of things. We're gonna look at this some more in some future videos. Uh, maybe put a blade on that iron structure and uh, use it in some uh, aggressive actions and see if it does take a set. But it's an interesting concept. It's something that we've known quite a while now about these swords that they were not necessarily symmetrical all the time. It's the difference between symmetry and ergonomics, right? Using a tool, you're gonna use ergonomics to design it. Symmetry is more about the eye, the aesthetic, the art of it in a sense. And when you go and you look at a lot of Nordic swords, they've adjusted the uh, aesthetics of the sword to work with that asymmetry. You will often see the design slightly askew. The top knots are slightly off. Sometimes they're set differently. Sometimes the pommels are even set a little more to one side than the other on the tang, or the tang's a slightly one-sided shape. All of those things happen. If you want to find a lot of detailed information about that on specific originals, I'd go to Dimitator's uh, uh, Patreon page and look up some of the stuff on there, really great info. But this is just the discussion about that. What are the materials? How do they affect that? Who's doing this? Is it the owner of the sword? Is it the maker? A lot of questions that still need to be answered, but they're ideas that are kicking around in our heads. And when you as a customer are ordering one of these swords, we can adjust to that kind of historical model if you are interested. Have a great day. Talk to you soon.